All right, my friends, today this video is specifically for my guitar players who watch what I do. This isn't for, you know, the musical stuff. This isn't for the songs or the songwriting or the live looping. This is strictly about gear. Today is my opinion and a description of my experience. My primary bottom line is be aware. If you're purchasing from a niche company, you should do research on that company. Specifically, be aware of purchasing things from Atomic Amps. If you mail in, your gear for a kind of um, warranty or a replacement or a refund, you might not ever see your gear or your money. So let me tell you a little bit about my story. On December 29th, I bought a bass box guitar pedal from Atomic Amplifiers off their website for a little over $400. I did a video unboxing it. My intent was to try and use it as part of my regular pedal board. I don't need to go into the technical ideas behind it or whatnot. It just wasn't a good fit. And I remember I had researched heavily beforehand to see what their return policy was like because they were so boutique. They weren't my usual, you know, Sweetwater, Musician's Friend, or Amazon where I could e do an easy return because um, they're such a smaller company. They had, I think it was between 10 to 15 days uh, after your purchase to be able to return it. So I made sure it, I checked it out immediately, saw it wasn't a good fit, and so I wanted to initiate the refund quickly so that I could still get $400 back. That's a lot for a, a guitar pedal, you know, for a stomp box. Not to say it's not worth it. It was a very complex and high-end pedal. It just wasn't a good fit. And so I wanted to keep within the guidelines and return it as quickly as possible so I didn't lose out my money. So I emailed the company and the owner, Tom King, asking to be able to initiate the refund process because they have a whole process. I didn't hear anything back for the next day. And so I followed up with another email, still no response. And I called every day after that because I was worried that I would fall outside of that return window of 10 to 15 days. When I didn't get any response for a couple of days in a row, I started to get really worried that it was a scam, right? And so I started to do the research that I should have done up front. I started looking at all the discussion boards to see if anyone else had had any trouble contacting Atomic Amps or getting a refund process. And sure enough, I found a significant number of complaints on different discussion boards in different places going back as far as 2015. They were doing the exact same thing. People couldn't get refunds. They couldn't get in contact. Um, one online comment said that they got a response after leaving a voicemail threatening to call the cops. And so I decided to do something similar and be like, okay, I'm gonna leave a voicemail because I could never get anyone on the phone. And I, I decided to say something along the lines of, hey, I'm gonna escalate this further if I can't hear back from you by tomorrow. Sure enough, I got an email tomorrow initiating the process and it was a really nice email. It was like, hey, sorry, it didn't work out. Let me know if there's any way I can help you fix any problems that may have been, but here's the, here's the process and here's the paperwork to go ahead and get started. Now, something really good about this. In my research, I actually found a, a couple of really highly praising comments on the customer service because they were able to talk to the owner now, I give major kudos to small companies and small businesses. I'm a small business owner. I get it. Being able to provide detailed customer service, personal stuff is fantastic when you can pull it off. But when you've grown to a scale to where you can no longer keep up with it and you're starting to not refund people and not communicate and hold people's gear and their money, there's a major problem here. So it's a double-edged sword there. I can see that there's a, a handful, a sprinkling of really good comments, but most of them were really, really bad. And I wish I would have looked up this up before that. On the 14th of January, I mailed my product back and I included an insurance coverage for over $400, for $400 and tracking. And then I, um, I was able to see that he received it on the 17th of January. It was delivered by USPS and I kind of forgot about it. And then I, all of a sudden it's January 31st. So we're talking two weeks. I'm like, oh, I should check and see if I've gotten a refund back yet. See if I've received any funds. Nope, nothing in the mail, nothing to my credit card, nothing nowhere. And I'm a little concerned. I'm like, shoot, it, it took me a long time just to be able to get in contact with somebody to get a response. Now I'm not getting a refund. What do I need to do? I started calling and calling and I didn't get any response. I started emailing, no one would respond. His voicemail was full and I'm like, ah, so he's either out of the country or something's going on to where he just can't keep up with what his business is trying to kick out. Today is the 16th of February and I still haven't gotten a refund yet. So I'm really, really frustrated. And 
as I dug into more of the comments, I found a complaint on the Better Business Bureau website that said that they had returned a $2,000 AMP and never gotten a response or follow up on it. That's $2,000. Now, from what I understand, and again, my opinion and my experience is that this is a form of in legalese, which is called conversion. I'll put a link to what that is down there too. Conversion is when you transfer someone's property and there's an inherently wrong concept of possession. It's, it's a lesser crime than theft, but it's still a converting someone's property into a different possession. So in my case, he converted my pedal into his property. Now he has my property and I don't have my money. So this is a form, a lesser form of theft. And to look back and to see that there's multiple indicators of multiple experiences that are very similar to this. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't know how those turned out. They may have been refunded in the end, but all the way back to 2015, I'm seeing a pattern of people not being able to get their money for a refund for equipment that they put in. Then they got ghosted. They couldn't get in touch with anybody. So I don't know, you know, COVID could have been a thing, but we're talking, yeah, fair enough. COVID hurt everybody. But all the way back in 2015, this was happening. So it's well beyond that. This was a pattern and, and it doesn't, it doesn't make me happy to like, I want to support American small businesses and musicians. Absolutely. But that's also the point. Musicians don't have money and to be able to hold their gear and their money hostage is atrocious, man. So to be able to, to provide awareness on this and to hopefully expedite this and make things better so that people don't get stuck like this or to help improve the company, let's bring a little bit more light to this. So what's the bottom line after all of this information? If you're going to deal in a boutique type company that you're going to invest in, and you should, you should support them as much as you can. Make sure you double check and do some more research on whether or not you can get your stuff taken care of. Can you get refunds? Are there, is there a history of problems with communication? Is there transparency or does it seem like there's something wrong there? And at this point, I feel like I've had to, um, I've had to threaten to take him to small claims court. And at this point, I still haven't gotten, gotten my money back. And so if things change, I'm definitely going to link a video of how the refund was initiated, but I'm really, really disappointed. And I really, really hope that this doesn't happen to other musicians. But luckily I have a day job, but I know there's other musicians that find them in a spot where they're like out two grand and they're waiting to be able to gig and they can't just because they can't get in touch with a company that sold in their product. So I hope that this helps shine some light on a trend that might be going on with, with, with this company and it saves some people some grief. I wish that I hadn't gone through this. Um, but then again, $400, it's not, it's not like two grand and it's not my main money maker, but I definitely think it's important to spread awareness on this specific issue with this specific company. All right, go out and do good work. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit. See ya.